Hi, I'm Keela. So, I just wanted to do this video on YouTube because I had a dream a while back. Not a while back, but maybe two months ago at the most. But, um, I just want to share it with you guys. Um, you know, so that we all know that the Lord is coming back soon. And when I say soon, I mean very soon. So, um, in this dream, um, I basically went to hell. Like, I was literally in hell. Um, what happened was, I went, when I, well, I used to smoke weed to be a starter. About I've been clean for now, uh... When did I have this dream? May, so June, July, August, September. So about four and a half months now. But, um, so one night I got high. But before I got high, you know, I had, well, I always get high, smoke weed. But I had always been praying to the Lord because I knew that I wanted to stop. So one night I was smoking. And, you know, the night before I remember going into the bathroom. And I'm like, Lord, whatever you have to do to, you know, take this from me because I'm ready to serve you. Do what you have to do. We're never knowing that when I went to bed that night that that would be my last time smoking. So I smoked weed, got high, got high, smoked about three, four blunts, um, went to bed that night. And sure enough, I landed myself right in hell. So when I first entered hell, I remember seeing this woman and um, she was like, uh, where am I? Where am I? I mean, she was so scared, terrified. So I'm just standing there looking at her, like basically watching my surroundings. And I remember saying to her, um, you're in hell. And then she was like, no, Jesus said he'll never forsake nor leave me. Jesus said he'll never forsake nor leave me. So I knew, you know, because even though I smoke weed and I sin, you know, which we all do, I knew that that was eternal separation from the Lord. So I remember saying, you know, this is eternal separation from him. So the next thing you know, as I'm basically trying to, you know, talk her out of like, you might as well stop calling on the Lord because we're stuck. So, um. The next thing you know, you know, this fireball comes in and it, it it had these colors that I cannot describe. But it, it came past me like this, like slow motion, just moving across, like moving across. So um, I just knew it was Jesus. I just knew it was. And the next thing you know, this portal opened up. It was blue. It was like, it was blue, but it had like these colors, but it was moving like water. You can see from where I'm seeing, but you couldn't figure out what was on the opposite side. Next thing you know, Jesus snatches her out of there in the blink of an eye. So I tried to throw my arm in, but the thing disappears so quick. So at this point, my torment starts. I am freaking out. All of a sudden, I was moved into this place. So as I moved into this place, I remember like sitting up on something, but technically not sitting on it. Like you can feel it, but you're not. It's like being spiritual, but still being in the real world. Um, if you guys can try to, you know, imagine that. So as I'm sitting up on this thing, you know, the Lazarus story came back to me. And I was like, oh, okay, let me look to heaven to see if I can see. I mean, let me look up to, to see if I can see heaven. But when I looked up, the only thing that I saw was like this dark, 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 musky um, cloud. It gave me the chills. The next thing you know, this demon was walking, walking in. Now, the thing about being in hell, from what I saw, everything is done with your head. You don't speak verbally. It's all through the mind so something was like jump in so i jumped in this lake of gasoline not the lake of fire but the lake of gasoline so when i jumped in oh my gosh i was burning do you hear me i was burning up so at this point i am just laying here taking this burning but i'm praying i'm like lord you know i'm so sorry father god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry father god next thing you know this demon walks in i just knew he was gonna rape me because like i told you guys you know it's common sense in the head of what's gonna happen so um i'm just you know laying there and i'm just taking this burning and i just knew the man was gonna rape me but instead he went over and grabbed this other woman I believe she, well, she was a blonde head. How I knew because of her hair. It was blonde. So, and I took that as she was willfully having sex. The next thing you know, I moved into this other spot of hell. And at this point, I don't know how I got up out the, the lake of gasoline. But I knew I was out of it at this point. At this point, you know, I moved into this other part of hell. So I'm in a cradle position all of a sudden. And I'm just like basically pleading to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, I'm so sorry, Father God. If you get me up out of this, God, I promise you I will not do it anymore. So... The next thing you know, um, I remember I heard this voice and Jesus was like, I, yes, Jesus. He was like, you're not in hell for smoking weed. You're in hell because you will not stop smoking weed. And let me repeat that. He said, you're not in hell for smoking weed. 
one, one of the reasons you are in hell is because you will not smoke, stop smoking weed. So at this point, I'm just like, okay, God. Oh, yeah, I skipped a part. I'm sorry about that, guys. So it was one part when I was in hell, when I was in the lake of gasoline. And you know how you pour your children, like, bubble bath water into the their their bath water and you shake it to mix that you know the mix mix it up to get the bubbles you know how you want them and make sure the tub have the bubbles in there well that's what i did with the liquid gasoline because i knew i knew i was in hell sorry about that i knew i was in hell but i just knew that well i just told myself well maybe i'm going crazy so i decided to shake the water you know like you do with the bubble bath and yes i felt that heat of gasoline still burning so jump back to the part i was telling you guys so when Jesus was like, you know, you're not in hell for smoking weed. One of the reasons you're in hell is for smoking weed. You know, I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry, Father God. You know, I can't remember everything I was saying, but I was pleading to him. I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry, Father God. If you let me out this um, fire, Father God, I promise you, Lord, I will not do it anymore, Father God. I will, I will give it all up. Sure enough, when I spoke those words, just like that, I woke up. What woke me up was my phone rung. It was my brother calling me. <clears throat> and instantly, I woke up to roll up because that was my morning routine. I would instantly wake up, roll up a blunt, smoke, then do what I felt like I needed to do, which was like maybe brush your teeth or, you know, things like that. And um, <clears throat> so I, when my phone rang, like I said, I woke up, was, I went headed to my little counter because that's where I had the blunt at with the weed. And as I'm breaking this blunt apart, all of a sudden, it was like how I'm looking at you guys now. It was like a screen show came in front of me, seriously. And I saw everything that I had went through in hell, step by step by step. Instantly, I broke down crying. I, I mean, I just was teared up in tears. I could not believe what I had just experienced. And I'm just crying. I'm like, Lord, you know, why would you take me here? Like, what did I do for you to take me here, God? And so I flushed my weed and I haven't smoked since that day now i didn't understand you know right away why the lord had took me there so you know i'm reading my bible you know i have been studying some weeks went by i instantly joined the church though instantly i mean two days later i was on facebook strolling strolling and i seen this pastor he goes by the name pastor randy randolph and you know i wrote him and i was like you know sir i need to get in church <clears throat> and instantly i got into church and i have been in church since then but, um, so as I'm studying my Bible, you know, weeks had went by, I want to say like maybe th two to three weeks. Well, two to three weeks had went by and I realized like I'm sitting there reading my Bible and instantly the Lord had showed me what I asked for. So I'm going to get to that. So, you know, like I, like I told you guys in the beginning of this video, I had been on my knees every day. I was reading my Bible you know, I had been telling myself, you know, I want to get myself right with the Lord and I want to change. So I um, was on my knees one day. I had been praying to the Lord. But this Pacific night, I got on my knees and I was like, Lord, whatever you have to do. I mean, whatever you have to do to to get my mind right with you and to take away, you know, what I'm doing to 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 basically live for you. I was like, I don't care what you have to do. Do it. And I never knew, though, out of all things, he would take me to hell. Well, sure enough, I got exactly what I asked for. No, I did not ask to go to hell. No, I did not say, Lord, scare me. I said, Lord, whatever you have to do. So, yeah, I pretty much asked, you know, I told him, whatever you have to do to take it from me. And sure enough, your girl was scared straight. To, I don't drink. I have not smoked in four months. I have not had sex in six months. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't spoke to, you know... You know, because I was of the world, truthfully. I smoked weed, I party, I drank, I, I hung out with my friends, and I'm only 22. And, um, you know, I was going out, I was, you know, about my job, making my money, flashing on Facebook. You know, everything that a young girl who's not in her right, what would I say, mindset, you know, of knowing right from wrong, how a lady should act, you know. Instead, I was basically a follower, doing everything that... I saw that I thought was okay and that I thought was cute and that I thought was like, oh, okay, I'm her. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, that I have been to that situation and now that the Lord has taken me from that situation, at first I was scared. You know, I'm not even going to lie to you guys because guess what? I'm still a dreamer. 
I have had numerous dreams. And you know, I'll do another video and tell you guys about this other video I had about martial law last night. Yes, last night I had a dream about Beyonce. Which was weird to me. I mean, we were literally sitting together. But I'll get to that. So what I want to tell you guys about this video is please, 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 please. For all my smokers out there, my drinkers out there, my the ones willfully having sex and, not, and that's not married. And, you know, going out and cursing and anything. My point is that is not of the Lord. Please, please, please get yourself together. Get yourself right. Confess your sins. Admit that you have a problem. Admit that you like going out. Admit that you like smoking because that was my issue. I admitted it. I said, God, I don't know how I'm going to put this down. You know, I, I said to him, I said, my body needs weed because it had got to the point, you know, where my body had became immune to it. And it was just like, I can't eat without smoking. I can't drink without smoking. I can't sleep without smoking. Hell, hell, I can't even have a conversation without smoking. But thanks to the Lord, five months clean. And I don't even think about it. It was points where I would catch an attitude if I didn't smoke weed. I couldn't. I just felt like I needed to have weed. Weed was my medicine. Weed was... You know, what calmed me. Basically, weed controlled me. You know, and I got a two-year-old son, and I couldn't even deal with him without smoking weed. Till now, I never realized, you know, how much weed had took over. And if you were a real smoker, I know you will know that weed literally takes your memory. It makes you forget things. And I had the best memory ever till now. I'd be like, I said that? Oh, when I did that? You know, because of the marijuana. So... Again, my point is, is please change your life. Please, you know, give it to the Lord. You know, accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, and get yourself right because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How I know because all these dreams, you know, I'm having all these these visions. I'm, I, you know, that I'm I'm seeing and the Lord Himself speaking to me in hell, telling me one one of the reasons I was there. So imagine yourself being in hell. Jesus coming in, snatching a girl out in front of you. Oh, I meant to tell you guys too. When you go to hell, you go in the flesh from what I saw. This girl had poetic justice braids on her head. Now that's in our time. You know, the big braids that Janet wore in um, Poetic Justice movie. Well, yeah, same thing. Black girl. She had braids on her head. She didn't even realize she was in hell. Got in there and was freaking out. I mean, losing her mind. Instantly, she was like, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Like, going crazy. And I'm like, you're in hell. So, my point is, is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Get yourself right. And yes, she was saved because she trusted in the Lord. She said that the Lord said he'll never forsake nor leave her. And he sure enough did not forsake nor leave her. He came back and he snatched her. So, get you guys. I just want you guys to, to please, you know, get yourself together. Serve the Lord. You know, stop doing, you know, whatever you're doing. What you think is okay. Because... Like the Bible says, he's coming like a thief in the night, meaning unexpected. What do we expect from a thief? Unexpected, right? You you never know when a thief is going to come take from you, right? It's always unexpected. So Jesus is coming while we're sinning. You know, some of us are going to be having sex. Some of us are going to be pregnant, birthday parties, smoking weed, drinking, you know, and... Come on, you guys. It don't take a genius to realize that the, this world is coming to an end. Transgenders is now okay. You know, we or we got a gay flag. Obama is making everything that used to be considered wrong is now considered okay. You know, babies having babies. And yes, I know that, you know, we've been saying, oh, but it's been going on. I don't care. Half of this transgenders wasn't out the way they're out now. You know, um, we weren't supporting, you know, uh, gay marriage back then or you know, now when us young kids get pregnant, instead of us, you know, doing, you know, like, you know, back then they would ship them off and make them get an abortion or give the children away. Now we around here and we celebrate like a baby shower, like a birthday party. And the thing about it, we ain't even married. Do you know having a child out of wedlock like is the bastard child? So again, my point is, there's so many things that cause us to make Jesus upset. And we need to get ourselves right. You, we need to start living for our first love. Our very first love was Jesus Christ. And he loved us so much that he was willing to die for our sins. So it was nice meeting you guys again. My name is Keela. Um, you know, give your life to Christ. You know, and I'll update another video about my martial law video. I mean, um, dream um, but other than that, it was nice to meet you guys. Bye.